In this tutorial, I'll show you a method for animating overlapping type on a stroke without losing your mind. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett, this is the video shot. Animating type on a path is pretty easy, but if you want it to overlap, it gets really tricky. These were created by Landor, almost definitely not in After Effects, but it was a fun challenge trying to figure out how to recreate them. It involves essentially just two layers for the animation and no fiddly matting or masking layers. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna create a new text layer and I'm using this typeface here. It's on the Adobe website. And I want it a bit bigger, but don't be tempted to scale the text here. We want to leave this scale at 100%. So just bump it up here. We want quite a lot of the text and we want this phrase repeated. So you can either copy and paste it a whole bunch of times, or we can go into the text and add this repeat expression, set the number of repetitions, then if you get this warning sign here, just means that you need to go to project settings and then change the expressions engine. And then just add a space at the end. The bit that you probably already know how to do is put in this text on a path. So I'm going to freehand draw a simple mask path. So we've now got a mask here and we can go to path options set that type to be on that path. Or if you've got some prepared already in Illustrator, we can grab one of those, copy and paste into the mask path. The next thing we need to do is change the baseline of the type, because if we push that round with the first margin, you can see it's rotating around from the bottom of the type. So I'm gonna just set that be minus 35 but it's actually going to be helpful to have a guide for our stroke in the scene somewhere so and I've already got the shape copied so I'm gonna click off the text create a new shape layer here press UU for the path and then paste that I'm gonna call this path right click and set it to be a guide layer and then in the stroke options just give it an approximate width that we want. So something like this, maybe 110, drop the opacity down, and maybe even change the type to be 80, and just adjust the baseline again a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna pop the text on top and change the background color to gray. By the way, I'm using classic 3D renderer with these settings here. And now the mask path, I can just set that to be black. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, and this is optional as well, is just expression link the, the mask path, so press M. And then I'm gonna pick whip that onto here. So then our guide path, if we wanna adjust this, it's going to adjust the text as well because we need to create a stroke that's not a stroke. Yeah. But it'll make sense in a second. I'm going to turn this off. So now on our type, I'm going to go into text and then animate, enable per character 3D and then animate position. I'm going to call this Z shift and then for the Z position I'm gonna set a value of 1000 then go into the range selector and set it to be ramp down so now if we go into two views and if the left view is set to top we can see it staggering the type in Z space next we want to create our stroke that's not a stroke but before we do that I'm going to turn off the text animator and the mask path here and also go into the source text. Set this to be one view just so I can see what I'm doing here and then duplicate this. And I'm just going to solo the duplicate and rename this stroke. And instead of this type, I'm just going to type in the letter I repeated. Uh, copy and paste that and I want this to be black and then 
add a stroke. So I'm going to bump the stroke up to 30. I actually want the corners to be rounded. So I'm going to go over to the text properties and then the stroke. I'm going to set that to be line join round. So I'm going to unsolo this and then both of these just set the mask path back to here again. And you can see what this is doing. So I'm creating a faux stroke using those eyes, but you don't want to see these joins. So we're going to go into the stroke and then set the kerning to be minus 200. So if I turn the expression back on, you can see it's wrapping around the whole of the path that we've drawn. And if we zoom in, and if we want a thicker stroke, we can change the size here. Just checking that it still looks like a smooth curve here, and you can always increase the kerning or reduce it. You just have to bear in mind how closely that's going to be scrutinized if someone's looking at your animation. So one thing to bear in mind is you're going to notice that your computer's going to slow down quite a lot. So what I suggest is creating a proxy of it. So what I mean by that, and let's just get rid of the expression here and then just make these off the mask path. Before we carry on, a very quick shameless plug. I provided a free project file for this, as I always do. But if you'd like to support the channel, please consider buying the full version for £5. You'll get both the comments contained in the free version, plus the setups for all these other animations. There's rig setups for common fonts such as Arial and Trebuchet. The file also includes instructions and tips. You'll find links for everything in the description below. Okay, let's crack on. So we've got our stroke here that we're going to use, but the proxy is going to spare our sanity while we're working. So actually, let's just bump up the down the baseline. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this, call it stroke proxy, turn off this one, and then here we don't need as many repetitions. So this is going to be a lot quicker. Okay. And for this method to work, the width of the text and the stroke layer needs to be identical or very close. Obviously we need more text than this. So uh, let's parent them to our path here. Actually, before I do, I notice the anchor points there. So I'm just going to center it. Control Alt Home. So let's parent all our layers to our path, which is just there as a reference anyway. And then we can just scale this down. So it's just to have a look at the type and the stroke in its entirety and see if the lengths match. So the proxy and this one. We'll turn on the expression again. And to be honest, we probably don't need 15. That's, I think that's a bit much for what we're doing. I'm gonna set it to seven, because all of this is gonna help speed things up. With a bit of fiddling, I've got the text and the stroke the same width or close enough. Use kerning and repetition to align whatever you're animating. Then if we scale the path back up and pop these back on the path, we're back here. So it's actually quite hard to see what's going on because they're all the same color. So type, uh, I'll just set this to be yellow and then the strokes because they're black, just so they stand out. So they're basically intersected, which, which is why we're getting this. So all I need to do is just bring this forward. So maybe minus 15, so we can see it's overlapping and that's the effect that we want all we need to do with our stroke is swap it out at the last minute but just make sure that the stroke proxy and the stroke are the same widths as well so i'll show you what that looks like i've got the text sitting on top of the proxy and then underneath i've got the the actual stroke that we're going to use and i've just dropped it down so we can compare it they're 
very close. I've got 57 repetitions and it's set to minus 250. All of these amounts are pretty arbitrary, just as long as the stroke looks smooth and you've got the same width here. Dial it in as much as you can. So I'm just gonna pop this, actually I'm gonna turn off the expression so my computer can cope with it and then pop this back where it should be. So actually the stroke proxy, I'll set that to be a guide layer as well, just so it's uh, so we don't accidentally render the wrong one. And if I, if I just reset the scale and then pop the, the mask paths and the text animators back. So now all we need to do is keyframe the type, but we'll also need to keyframe the stroke as well. Even though technically the stroke, what it's gonna do when we push it along is it's gonna shift on the Z. Uh, so we'll, we'll add it to the stroke first. And we can do that with the first margin. So you'll see as we push it, it's going back in Z space. And I'm just gonna drop the resolution and just turn off the proxy for a second. So yeah, we can do it with the first margin or text animator, doesn't really matter. Can add a position text animator, call this push. And let's say if we keyframe it over four seconds to 500. So then if we jump to the first keyframe, you'll see it shifted in the Z. And also we can see it move backwards here as well. So what we'll do is copy this onto both of our strokes. And if I press U, just gonna get rid of those keyframes and pick with them. So it's the same value. So now if we look at the stroke proxy, that's moving with it. And if we don't want that effect, I mean, we could we could make this a 3D layer and keyframe the Z or uh, what's slightly easier is, because it doesn't involve keyframing is add a camera. If we go into the camera options. We can pick with the zoom to the Z position so that to be a minus value. And then the Z position, we can set that to be something ridiculous like 100,000. So that basically flattens everything out. So you don't get any, you don't get any perspective. Press U for keyframes and then J and K. You can't see the movement in the active camera view. So just to check what that looks like with the proper stroke, we'll turn off the proxy and then with our stroke, we don't need to solo these. We just need to enable the Z shift and the path. And then finally, the repetitions. And if we press N for the end of our work area and preview that, it will take a while, but we'll get this. But we've set that up now. So we've essentially got a rig where we can duplicate the comp. And if I just go in, turn off the stroke and turn on the proxy again. And so if this one, if we call it hello, and then grab this path. because they're expression linked to this, we can just copy and paste. And it's easy to create variations. And we can even scale this down. So just need to be conscious of when you're losing the text at the beginning or the end. So obviously that's our proxy. And if we turn turn that off and the stroke back on, but we'll get this. And that's about it. So thanks for watching. Before we go, this is the free project file. By the way, can we just take a second to admire 
the neatest project file that you've ever seen. Just two comps, no assets, not even solids because they're all contained live text layers, cameras and shape layers. So the neatest project file that you've ever seen. But obviously you're going to download the five pound project file. But I've included a guide text layer just to give you a bit of guidance. If you want to change the direction of the overlap so it's going the other way, what you can try doing is if we press UU, so if you remember the position of the Z shift is set to be a thousand. If we set that to be minus a thousand, and what we can always do is expression link one to another. That's going to switch the direction and obviously just need to copy that onto the agile stroke but I'll let you do that. So there's a few other things in the paid version but I hope this was useful whether you buy that or not. Thank you for watching, see you again soon.